Retailers are probably the biggest culprits of over-customizing software. They think that something that they do in their stores is, is so unique and so awesome that they need to figure out how to, how to make their software that they're employing do exactly that. The reality is they might be doing that process because that was the only way they could do the process before it got automated. A good example of this is workforce management software. But let's back up like five years ago. Five years ago, the thing that workforce management vendors did is they customized the crap out of their software for retailers. And they did it because retailers said, hey man, we are a super tanker. I literally had a retailer tell me this. I am a super tanker and workforce management is going to require that I introduce scheduling and timekeeping to all of my associates and to all of my stores and I can't turn that super tanker. So I need my workforce management software to, to get on board and to be part of that, to be part of that super tanker. And I need to automate what I, what I do today. It turns out that was a big mistake. The reality is, is by customizing a bad process, we really locked ourselves back in bad habits of the past and we didn't take advantage of, of what the potential of automation, optimization, and I don't mean optimization as in schedule, but I mean optimization of business processes, really improving the way we operate. Ultimately, it's about innovation, and by customizing, we lose the ability to innovate because we're just repeating the past as opposed to looking forward. When people think about how do we create a new process, when, when retailers sometimes get stuck about how do I improve, how do, I, I'm too close to the problem, it's a great opportunity to engage your associates. These are the people that are doing it every day. They know what works and what doesn't. They're the ones that are gonna roll their eyes when corporate asks them to do something that's crazy. They know what works in their stores and what doesn't, especially if you've got an engaged workforce. And the way that you can get them more engaged is to involve them in helping to improve those processes. You might need to bring in a facilitator to help out with the with with the specific you know Kaizen or 5S sessions, but ultimately turn to your store associates to get them to help improve the operations in the store. I think one of the things that retailers get wrapped around the axle about is that your they think about the business processes that they do, the things that they do in the stores, whether it's how they receive or how they merchandise, how they put up visual displays, whatever it might be. They think that that's part of their culture and they need to continue to do those things. But your culture doesn't reside in those business processes. Those are simply the motions that people are going through. The, your, your, your culture is ultimately derived from your people. It's derived from their behaviors and their attitudes and the way they think about their jobs. And that comes through and bubbles up to your brand. And that represents kind of your authentic experience to the outside world.